That is very true. Um, oh, it's jumping us through. What just happened there? <laughs> what? Come back in and rescue us. <laughs> oh, admin left, that's why. Uh, do I know anyone that knows how to model? Uh, yes, um, but they're not going to do anything outside of where they are. I've asked and they've made it expressly I clear, like so... To balance it. Anyone you okay. can use? No, I Center. don't. Be They're sensible. rare. There needs to be about seven more people on blue four than are on independent. Slot yourselves up slowly and get it right. They're as rare as uh, good coders. Six. You're giving them to you. You have too much faith in them because they know their value, so they you know trust, stay in their own little circle. <laughs> they're here as solo players and therefore value their place here. You lot are the savages. Yeah, I don't totally agree. The herd. Whoever made this mission, it looks cool. good. Job. I have a question regarding TS. Thank you. Uh, Wolf, let me look it up for you. Currently 13,467.6 hours on Steam's counter. Um, regarding need, Centaur, uh, does, does someone need a guest so enough. or uh, anything other than a guest role to join the Centaur? Yeah, exactly, Dracoy. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm gonna restart it. Yeah, he's gonna restart it. Alright, that's funny. There's two people that want slides. <laughs> yep. Just gonna get Where the casting catch going? channel real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh. There we go. I have black screen. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> that was break, insane. break, break. We're oh, doing it live. Shut break. the fuck up. I have to restart it. Slot okay. back into the slot. Let me actually take my calculator out real quick. Have screen again. You did? Oh, you can cancel yeah. to go back to the um, slotting screen. What's that number? 13467. Oh, okay, everyone, press capital, come back to the starting screen. Let's have a look at these numbers. Before it's balanced. I'm just going to chill in here. Yeah, Nemesis and South Slide, if you guys take. Yeah. Oh, no, Nemesis, you're on independent. So that's 561.125 yep. days. Oh, right. which is... Everyone, jump back to where you were. I mean, over the past four yeah, years, I give or take, I've spent now. over a year of it in Arma. Oh, restart. Which yeah, makes sense when I think about it. No, it's just a the amount of work I put in this general? damn thing. Look, it would be exciting if it went smoothly. Huh. Uh, I, think I think that's a mild thing. Yes. I mean, it's uh, my, you, you know, you nine to five job, so... Guys in the service <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, it's now down to 120, so we should be able to get in. People are reconnecting oh, immediately. About a third of the time for four years, yeah. CJ. Makes sense. <laughs> Uh, that, is, that member uh, that's, was he part that's of the RSG? Yeah, so I hope you enjoy yeah, this one. Was, yeah. They're okay, just trying yeah, to organize so for this. No what. I could drop out if needed. That'll be uh, up to the Centaur people. We'll have one of them drop, but we'll we'll see. You'll be able to do it if needed. Can drop out. If Maybe. needed, I can. Got gotcha, you. Thank we'll you. We'll see what's happening at the minute. Lots of people are getting kicked off. Let's uh, let's balance this. But everyone, if you get jumped out, jump back in nice and quick, and let's get the show going because we're here. I'm gonna mute myself to address Dracoy's comment. Um, Dracoy, what you could do is you could just make a prison. You don't have to model it. Uh, you could use the barracks buildings from Vanilla. You could combine them with some tunnel. Um, you know, build your own out of walls or whatnot. And um, also, you could use uh just assets and you could literally just make yourself one if that's like the purpose of the op uh but it depends how big you want to make it but i someone could just build it out of you know anywhere from 100 to 200 assets depending on how detailed you wanted it to be uh if you wanted a lot of detail then i wouldn't recommend using it in a large scale op but if it's just going to be its own entity then you could do a lot of detail it's only like three or four hours of work it's for an RP server, then you'd want to keep it simple, in which case uh, you'd probably only use like up to a dozen buildings, make a perimeter fence, and um, find a way to script uh, like iron bars for gates. It's all possible. There's a lot you can do in Arma, and I've been, you know, trying to teach myself how to code in all of it, but you just have to have the know how and learn. It's possible, but yeah. 
Well, Larry, I mean, we're waiting for the we're waiting for the mission to begin, so we can we can BS about whatever until uh, we go to map screen. Then we'll then we'll lock it up. We're in the beginning parts. Uh, what else? I've got two commercials to play today. Uh, if I were to tab out real quick, I already got one of them ready to go right here. The uh, hold up, wait a second. Here we go. Yep. So that one's ready to go. And we'll be playing another one during the NA branch of um, Friday Night Fights between rounds one and two. And this one will also play. Um, the first one for EU today for this stream is going to be talking about the Stargate op next week. And then the other one is going to be a bit of a joke op uh, for the uh, NA one. So let me tap back in here. They're just getting everything sorted right now. We're going to be at a capacity at 124. And who's tw uh, DMing me right here? Okay, cool. Just making sure that's all sorted. Yeah, right, Ogrim site. I try to edit some of those down the best I can, but I haven't had the time to give it a proper, like, the proper edits over the past few weeks. I've been too busy working on a plethora of projects and not sleeping and, you know, doing a bunch of dumb stuff. Uh, there won't be any MARPs for the Stargate op, Donnie. Um, if it goes well and we do, and they want additional ops, I might build the MARP in. Um, I've also, in the test video, uh, when I already gave it to a few people, I got some complaints about the lack of P90s in the op. And I defended it by explaining the whole purpose of the operation, but... Even though people don't understand the different SG teams, I think we'll have another op later on where I'll just give everyone P90s since people want to go with that. Are the PVPs first person view? Yes, they are first first person, uh, forced first person, excuse me. And I will also say for EU round three, I am going to finally go on the ground. I'll be chilling with Scandi Recon and I'll probably get killed off immediately. So we'll, uh, we'll go from viewing to commentating. <laughs> As a, in a very quick succession. So if you wanna, if you wanna see an actual ground POV, we'll reserve it for the third round of this stream. I'm also debating whether or not I'll take a break between the rounds, or if I'll keep streaming and we'll go into some random mission development. I'll probably take the break though. It's uh, it's been a really tough week for me with a lot of work. So we'll see how things go. So, Barbarian will also be co-commentating for me for both branches, and if he leaves, we'll probably have Boston, aka Ghoster, come in, co-commentate, and we'll see how things go. Oh, yeah, no, so, um, teaching yourself how to deal with all the coding in Arma 3 is a very tedious process. The best way, I would say, to learn is to play missions that have a lot of cool coded features and just break them apart with PBO Manager and then learn from there. Uh, and then if you want to look up how to do specific things, go and look them up. Uh, one of my biggest projects over the past two weeks has been the uh, video script from Killzone Kid and making it Zeus usable because of how the script works and how it creates cameras and how Arma treats the creation of cameras and deletion of cameras with arsenals in the Zeus interface, you have to write exception so that the camera continues after you cut your Zeus camera after they cut the arsenal cameras. So to do that, we've basically had to dig through a lot of coding and make a bunch of exceptions to execute every time the, you know, uh, how do I put it? When you leave the Zeus interface to go into your player or when you uh, leave the arsenal, there's a certain function of code that runs. So when the game detects that function of code run for clients, uh, we have to write an exception to say, hey, when this happens, restart the camera script for the drone, for the video feed. That way it continues, because otherwise those functions, when they run, cut the camera feed for the video feed for the drone as well. So that's been a pain in the ass to do. And uh, when you start getting to the levels like that, you discover that the uh, Bohemia Wiki for every single function doesn't always give you 100% of the information. You will actually have to go in to GitHub and actually look at all of the coding of the functions themselves 
uh, because finding the curator, because Zeus is actually called curator in, um, you know, the technical terms, finding the exact function of curator that closes the camera was a three-hour process of literally looking through code. We found it. It works now. I do prefer the, um... I do prefer not running that code, though, because that means my Zeus camera gets forced and I can pretend to be, you know, the guy on the other side and communicate with them. But it is possible. I've been thinking about uh, making a video just to show, you know, the scripts because people have been asking, but then also how to write the exceptions for it. Uh, and even then, they will not always work. And I'm trying to figure out why they still sometimes black screen. So it's one of those things where it works in single player, but I guess when we have so many clients on the server, it just doesn't loop properly for every single client. So it's been a pain in the ass, but I mean, that's what coding is in Arma 3. It is a gigantic pain in the ass. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we are now going to the mission screen. I'll go ahead and unmute. We will officially begin the first round of Friday Night Fights and... Yeah. There's the other right, guys, we've done this a lot of times. So we know how to start up. Let's go, boys. Right, let's get our briefing. All right, um, basics, um, uplink, free terminals, and um, both sides have um, some assets, like Blue 4 has two M2 Humvees and one M240 Humvee. And um, In4 has Dishkas, two pieces. Else, that is basically it. You can use the whole map. Um, yeah, any questions? Blue full lead, any questions? Nope. Independent lead, any questions? Are they sequential? No. Non-sequential. It's uplink. Awesome. Right. Then without further ado, let's push forward. All right. Jumping in to that, uh, I got to quickly change my... Uh, I'll change it in between rounds. All right, Barb. How are you? A little bit of a, a false start there, but... We are back yeah, in play. Jump the gun. Exactly. Also, Shadow Spark, thanks a, so much for the nine on three subs. First round being a non sequential uplink mission, so mm -hmm. the was between this and Rush is just that, gotta do them in order. This one on Bukovina, which is a uh, a small subsection of Cherneris. Focuses uh, on the northwest right airfield. Right yes, exactly. And oh my god, Terminal 2 already. That is quite the AO. But before we get into that, do you wanna take a look at the factions? Uh, sure. Let's also state, um, you know, uh, additional key differences between uh, uplinks because there are actually differences. Uh, so there's two different type of uplink operations. Uh, the first is when it's sequential, uh, which means only terminal one can be taken, then two, then three, and it'll say that terminal one is active and the other two are inactive. That's not the case though tonight. It is all uh, up for grabs for term. Uh, excuse me, round one. Uh, any terminal can be taken at any time. But another critical difference between the two is when it is sequential if you hack the terminal and it gets um taken back by the defending player base the timer resets that's something really yeah that's why it wasn't resetting last week because it that it um excuse me uh, that's why it was resetting last week uh that is actually a difference that huh. i never knew about i could have yeah, sworn yeah. that yeah like i could have sworn that they were about the same thing but i was told officially uh, by the FNF dev team that that is actually a feature. Now, with this being a non-sequential one, that means that if the defenders stop the hack of the terminal while it's going on for the 90 seconds, uh, the hack will not reset. So if they stop it at 30 seconds, uh, Blue 4 the only has to reinitiate the hack for another 30 seconds to get it passed. But if it was sequential, then it would reset for the full 90 seconds. So the more you know. The more you know. I think it's kind of weird that they do that separation, but it's their rules. We're just the commentators in the house, you know? We're just the spectators, absolutely. All right, so uh, do you want to talk about blue four or green four first? Um, well, let's start. Oh, yeah, let's do blue four. So, all right. Blue four are um, look at the little kind of old school uh, U.S. forces with that M81 woodland camo, mm -hmm. um, but they are very much just U.S. forces. Um, 556 M4s, M249s, the standard kit and caboodle. Um, for M3 Blue 4. Maws. Yes, for Blue 4. Uh, M3 Maws for the uh, MAT team. Uh, they have some transport in the form of armored and. Uh, wait, no, these are, these are all the armored ones because they have the smaller windows. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of reinforced. But they also have two M2 uh, Humvees and one 
M240 Humvee with a bit of a turret shielding. Yeah, I love how the 240, the weaker gun that only fires 7.62, gets all the up armor while the 50 cals with the bigger bullets are uh, super exposed. Yeah. That's an interesting yeah. balance choice, yeah. but I get it. The 240 is also the, uh, in addition to the turret, like you said, is the up armored Humvee, so it's going to mm -hmm. be bullet resistant. An RPG will take it out, no problem, but for yep. the M2 Humvees, uh, those can be pierced by small arms fire in addition to. Yeah, I can't do anything about the rain, guys. So an interesting little piece of balancing, and then there also mm -hmm. appears to be a command Humvee over by the uh, X-ray team that doesn't have anything, it's just a small car for them. Mm -hmm. One thing to note, uh, this is just coming from my stream, yes, the rain is really loud, that's just an Arma thing, can't really do anything about that. Uh, like, yeah. rain and wind, especially on Tanoa, Tanoa and wind is just deafening when you are Zeusing, or uh, streaming well, a commentary. East, so you could call it the East Wind. Which is the name of the campaign in Arma 3. Barb, I'm going to shoot you. Please, two tap me to the back of the head. I deserve it. Yep. All right, so another change that was recently made in FNF starting in the new year. Uh, for those of you that weren't here to see it. Oh, God, the rain just picked up. God damn it. All right, don't go nearby trees. It gets even louder. Is back to what I was saying. What? There is an, <laughs> there's an X-ray team now. Uh, and the purpose of the X-ray team is to basically limit both sides to one marksman again. So marksmen aren't at the platoon level anymore. They are a single marksman within the one group. So looking at Blue Force marksman team, uh, interestingly enough, the uh, marksman has decided to use a CCO scope and he gave his super big scope to a uh, team leader, I think. But then again, I think they just gave the scope back to the marksman here. So I think uh, they just... What I think they're doing is the Marsman took his uh, magnified scope. Yep. So he put his magnified scope in his backpack, and then yep. they kind of gamed it, so they gave him a CCO to put on. So I don't think it has an alternate, like, irons or backup irons. Yep. So you would have to just hip fire it otherwise. Which well, I mean, if you, uh, if you just go up a little bit with the Q button, you look around. I mean, it is really foggy on this map. So doing long range hits with a Marksman rifle might not be viable here. But if we mm -hmm. follow the fog up, it looks like it clears out a little more as we go uphill into the AO here. But Blue 4 doesn't know that the fog doesn't clear up yet. All they know is what they see right now. And they might just be planning ahead in case it turns into this foggy sort of operation. Do you want to look at green yeah. for now? Absolutely. Do you want to take it or do you want me to? Uh, you can start. Sure. So uh, if my mind is... Yep. Uh, oh, actually, not They're quite. They're already uh, deploying uh, here. Yes, they are, but um, I thought they were going to be Chernar's defense force, but they're more like pseudo-Russians with tiger it's, stripe. Which, yeah, interesting choice. You know, we, we've seen that before, and I always want to throw up a little bit because it's tiger stripe. It's American camo powder. I, see, I, I'm against you on that. I actually think this is kind of cool for, like, a green four force. It's not dedicated Russia. It's just some, like, chuckle fuck uh, third-party group that... I thought I it looks pretty cool. They also have Alice webbing, also triggers me a little bit. But It's green for it. It can be whatever the fuck the mission designer wants it to I, be. I, absolutely. Uh, you're completely right. But I'm not I'm not trying to chastise you. I'm just saying, like, you can get really ridiculous with some of this, man. You have an opinion, even if it's wrong, okay? Wow, okay. Uh, they do have Jannar's Defense Force uh, vehicles, so uh, yep. these are gas trucks and a UAZ with that green for X-ray is now pulling out in and going north. Um, I'll find Twiggy in a second. Yeah, they just have these transport vehicles and then either it's either two or three Dishcom statics to set up. And mm -hmm. looks like they're setting up it is, um, a third terminal. Yep. Which is surprising because, uh, well, if you want to, if, if you have any more words, uh, let me know. But, like, we mm -hmm. should start moving on to the terminals because I want to talk about Terminal 2. Yep. No, we'll get there in a second. I just want to point out that Green 4 is a 762 based. Uh, group today. Uh, so they have AKMs, they've got the PKMs, which is a, you know, a stifle, but the 762 weaponry will give these guys a bit of an advantage early on. However, with that Alice webbing, it means they're not really gonna have any body armor. I'm gonna quickly look back to Blue 4 and look for body armor's sake. And it doesn't look like, nope, they do have body armor, so going to be interesting here. Uh, with 5.56, five, they're going to be able to more easily kill Green 4 because they don't have any body armor. But with Blue 4 having body armor, I wonder how many AK rounds they'll be able to stand, uh, sustain before they go down. So, you want to talk about these terminal sites now? Absolutely. So then we'll start from the top with Terminal 1 in the north. Again, this is All not right. sequential, so Blue 4 can take these in any order they see fit. 
Uh, Terminal 1 is just the south of Grugino. I love how it's in a van. Yes, I was, this this is a very neat little setup. Um, I feel like the rain to the open ceiling. Of yeah, the, I, I think that terminal isn't really useful right now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, regardless, um, it's yeah, nice little in the back of a van kind of thing. So they got to come up. Um, it, it's like they were trying to transport it and, it and it crashed and burned out for the terminal safe or something like that. But not for lawn. <laughs> this weather, man. Up, uh, activate it and what was it 90 seconds? That this hurts. Yep, 90 seconds. Uh, basically, Blue Forest to run up, touch the terminal. It uh, opens up the terminal terminal in that little animation. And then Green 4 has 90 seconds to run up and uh, stop the hack. Uh, but it won't reset the timer. So uh, if Green 4 stops it and it's at like the 25 second mark, Blue 4 can run up, uh, initiate the hack, and uh, 25 seconds will then count down. When the terminal ends, it'll start beeping. And players have, I believe, 15 seconds to get away from it before the terminal spawns a GBU on it and explodes, killing anyone nearby. Yes, it looks like X-Ray is actually packing up. Um, this area is pretty sparse in terms of defenses. Mm -hmm. Not a bad place, but with their limited numbers for X-Ray, they are leaving one behind uh, in the form of... Let's try to see who it is because I'm not seeing name tags. Actually, no, he's coming back in now. But um, It's uh, Dingo. Yeah, Fun he fact, he's behind. the guy that runs the EU branch of FNF. Yes, uh, but moving on to Terminal 2, um, this is a fucking compound. <laughs> yeah. This is the strongest AO or uh, terminal site by far in this AO. Um, we have a kind of shipping yard with scaffolding, uh, fences, a crane to overwatch the entire area. Um, very, very neat little custom composition. You have bunkers facing in all directions, earthen ramparts, mm -hmm. uh, dragon's teeth, barbed wire, like the whole shebang. This is the place that Green 4 really wants to defend um, because, I mean, it, I don't. I feel like I don't even have to explain myself. It just looks like a goddamn fort. Oh, right, that's there. Uh, we, How do I fix that? Is, although they could probably hop over these walls and crawl under a few of them as well. But this is going to be tough, especially with uh, only some Humvees to really uh, give some supporting fire to. Keep going. Uh, the TFAR thing about not connected to TeamSpeak came up again, so I got to remember how to get rid of that. I think it was an add on options or something, but yeah. Yeah, I'm looking. So for Terminal 3, that's one way down south. Um, decent amount of people here that they, and they seem to be uh, reinforcing it and. Uh, garrisoning it with uh, sandbags, okay. HESCO barriers, and some bunkers. All right, that should uh, go away momentarily. The terminal itself and in an overwatching position to the west, which is mm -hmm. uh, it's neat, it's a little creative, but just given the pure uh, strength of- Thanks, Larry. Forward, Didn't even notice it. It was looking like I would absolutely just all eggs in one basket up there, mm -hmm. but um, maybe they'll get the call and they'll move back up there. We'll see. Looks like they might be doing that but we shall see so another rule that came up with the 2021 you know year change was if custom comps are made for environment uh the map creator excuse me the mission creator has to actually uh address those yeah. on the map so uh i honestly can't even tell if this is a custom comp or not like i'm gonna actually try to find some evidence here to go against it but it's Okay, no, I, yeah, no, no, it is a custom comp based off some of the shadow effects, uh, matching it with the angle. So, really great color work done mm -hmm. to make this, you know, look like an actual put position on the map. Like, it fooled me for a hot second because I had to think in the back of my mind, wait, is this like an actual area or not? But really, really well made in my opinion. So, I, I do think Green 4 is going to have a lot of fun turning this into a kill house, but they are going to need the numbers to defend it. And I'm seeing a lot of Green 4 guys instead holding the outer perimeters here, which is a little worrisome. Normally what we have in FNF is defending faction. Uh, yep, uh, go ahead. Uh, break. Blue Force spawn. We've already had an armor incident. Are and, you kidding me? Um, one of the trucks is blown up, and I don't know. I'm, I'm seeing Foxtrot 1, which has Deventer Lola Map Nora. Foxtrot 2 is still there. That's also TSB people. So, uh, it looks like two trucks were blown up, but that was it. Not seeing any smoke pillows. Don't know how that happened. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not a Humvee. I think that was the X-Ray Humvee, too. No, wait, no, I'm... I'm no, the Humvees are okay. Uh, two yeah. trucks blew up. I'm just stupid. 
all three Humvees are still here. I'm surprised we're not seeing anyone getting the 50 cal armed Humvees yet. I guess that's for people that are still here, but uh, you got to remember, when it is still safe start, it is impossible to die. You can still destroy your vehicles, however, but as long as you don't... Um, actually, if you leave the zone, it just teleports you back uh, until safe start ends. That's what these uh, colored zones mean. If you leave the map, though, you have 10 seconds to return before you die, and we've seen some very hilarious things happen with that map order in the past. Yeah, still, uh... Oh, I see that other truck now. Let me I find Twiggy now. Fireball, but, whew, that went a ways. Yeah, uh, so they are down in a couple trucks, but they should still have plenty to get to the AO, uh... Using, you know, a motorized force. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. we do have on the western side the safe start area. Uh, that, is that X-ray? No, that's Charlie 2. So his platoon 1 yeah, HQ. So to try and hold the airfield to a certain extent, looks like, or maybe go... Uh, and he's going to be holding Terminal 3. ...flank over to the west-northwest. Uh, the airfield, I mean, it's an airfield. Nothing really crazy up there. I'm not seeing any custom compositions, It's, but it is a very flat area and uh, hard to defend with, uh, you know, little numbers. Real quick, that is Charlie 2 in that UAZ. So they do have the map weapon, which I believe is going to be an RPG-32 in their case. I think they're going to try to charge on the airfield because it's all open ground and they can, you know, hold shift and get the car speed as much as they can. And then they're going to probably try to come out along the side dirt road at 016-021 to head northeast and potentially try to catch Blue 4 while they're setting up and try to get a few vehicle snipes in. I don't think they're going to be able to do it, but it is quite possible if they're quick and if Blue 4 keeps... Uh, I don't know what a proper word to use is, but I'm just going to say uh, misfinagling their vehicles and slowing themselves down. Yeah, if they go for a, a very quick spearhead mm -hmm. into uh, Gino and just directly towards Terminal 1, we've seen them kind of line up on the road southwest of the of their safe start area. So they may go around, they may try and uh, secure the flank on that airfield, uh, use that as a bit of a staging zone for Terminal 2. Um, and maybe even Terminal 3, because it is a pretty small AO, only 4 by 4 kilometers. So, using that this SSR, it's a dirt road, first off. Uh, SSR, because it's not the uh, you know biggest road in the AO. Uh, the MSR would actually be that other road going out. Mission just started. But they also have those really um, slow transport trucks, and it's going uphill. So that actually might buy the time for the Charlie 2 team. Already going on the airfield we're seeing here, and it's going to power right up the airfield and then probably uh, hook it right and try to again catch a vehicle out of position so that is what we're going to be focusing on an interesting move delta 2 and platoon 2 hq for blue 4 they're going in single file on foot directly south out of the safe start mm -hmm. area so they got uh, about a two click walk ahead of them to, i'm uh, to get to terminal one which i'm is... not surprised with that at all go ahead sorry well no no, no. I guess they don't want to. They want to stay quiet and maybe you know have the this motorized force draw most of the attention. But they're gonna, without any kind of wheels to like even dismount from. If they dismounted like a click north of Brigino, they would still be able to maintain stealth. But the timing for these two attacks, I don't think that um, footbound uh, squad is gonna be able to do much if the other guys get in trouble. I'm not surprised with it though, because we've seen time and time again. Almost all commanders in FNF play over cautiously instead of trying to rush. So with them on foot as a late coming group, uh, and I don't see any sprinting going on. They're just you know casually jogging through the forest. Um, they they're just gonna walk it, which is kind of worrisome with how open the northern side of Terminal One is. But we'll have to see how things yeah. go. Very flat, open fields, slightly rolling hills, and some you know a bit of terrain and cover to work with, along with some concealment, but. Uh, so, we'll see. Interestingly enough, Charlie 2 is actually going to camp the northern side of the airfield, trying to anticipate that Blue 4 is going to bring an armed vehicle over here. And funny enough, X Ray with the 240 Bravo Humvee is actually coming up here. So this is going to be interesting because of that the armored uh, armored up turret. It's going to be a lot harder for them to shoot out the gunner and nearly impossible for them to shoot out. Yeah, but Charlie 2 has their RPG out, and it's in yeah. a perfect position right now. To destroy it, absolutely. Um, to capture it, it would be a lot harder, but I'm sure they'll, they still have their UAZ tucked away. Hold on, hold on. Um, so, mm. 
Charlie, too, would be able to hear the audio of that Humvee over the rain right now. Sorry, uh, I just wanted to hear if uh, I could hear it. And that's why, yep, they are going guns up right now. Uh, the Matt guy did just hide behind something because he heard the vehicle. So I wonder if Charlie, too, is going to try to come up and hunt here. But they're definitely going to radio in to say that they have audible contact on the airfield itself. So I wonder if Green Force is going to send any QRF or just uh, hunker down right here. Mm -hmm. uh, that main blue four force has Guru, been thank you for the raid. Team. What are you playing? A few hundred meters behind, still on foot, but uh, appreciate it though. Hope you keep enjoying everything, man. Stay safe from COVID. Down south to the northwest of Terminal One, we do have Foxtrot One heading eastbound. Oh, well, they've stopped now. So, by the way, blue four is walking those guys because the two trucks got armored and they don't have any other room apparently. So, I'm gonna be curious to see if I see the trucks come back and try to ferry them up, but. With them having a lack of vehicle use, uh, I think they're going to just rely on trying to get their foot in the door with Terminal 1 and then walking the rest of the way, utilizing the forest cover to get to Terminal 2, and then the outbound forest area you kind of see between Terminal 2 and 3 if you have them both lined up. But Terminal 3 is going to be really tough because there is a lot of open area around it, and if uh, Green 4 is really good at holding uh through those open areas they should be uh, able to stop blue four from advancing but that's going to really rely on if independent can snipe out those vehicles with those heavy guns if they're able to do that then they can easily catch blue four in the open without blue four's vehicle support to uh try to rush up and hit those uh defensive positions sorry that lightning sounded really cool <laughs> Uh, X-ray for Blue Four. They pulled way northwest. The airfield. Happy birthday, Kuru! The, uh, nice. The edge of the map, but thank you for joining me for your birthday. A, a Appreciate very it, Matt. Wide berth uh, to the airfield itself. So uh, mm -hmm. Charlie Two for Green Four. They're probably gonna be looking around because, like you said, they did hear it. The RPG guy does have his uh, uh, the thirty-two out and is you know having it ready. But I don't know. This is gonna be an interesting play. It depends on how Blue Four actually decides to go on this if they even want to try and poke around the airfield at all so uh, we actually blue four had... it appears blue four is trying to do a wide pincer here i think the left pincer on the western side is actually trying to get into these forested areas and is going to move on terminal two first whereas the wide right pincer on the eastern flank i think is going to dismount in grishino and uh, come through the village area and hit terminal one and then potentially use their vehicles uh, to either assist with Terminal 2 to close the pincer on it, or try to come around and dismount somewhere along Terminal 3. X-Ray, though, I think is trying to get around on the rear right now to watch Terminal 3, just so they can get some recon data on Green 4 positions to see if it's something that they could just rush in and take. Because you gotta remember, for AOs like these where there's three objectives, the standard procedure is one of the objectives is ditched in favor of defending two and that's kind of what we see here with terminal one there's still a little bit of overwatch on it just as a precaution i really wonder if there's an explosive trap in play by these green four guys here i doubt it though because it was their x-ray group but they have some really good hiding spots here uh as i'm looking at them and i think they're just uh mainly doing reconnaissance here uh one so thing if... go ahead go ahead go ahead Oh, like I was going to say, Terminal <laughs> 1, they left a door open. So if Blue 4 is keen, they'll see that open door and go, mm. Oh, plus they also uh, busted the, the stop, the, the bar gate. So that's also a sign that they've yeah, been Yeah, that they've been so here. They delay their advance a little bit, just uh, on the air on the side of precaution. But yeah, mm -hmm. they do have a bit of an overwatch. Probably just get some kills of opportunity and then fall back into the Terminal 2 compound. This Bravo 1, Bravo 2 team pushing up along the eastern side of the airfield, kind of sniffing around. Um, yeah, they're, I wonder if they're actually going to even push in if they don't see anything. Because it's almost like if you don't see anything, why would you push in? And if you do mm -hmm. see something, maybe you shouldn't push in. So X-Ray is dismounting right now. Uh, they are on the far southwestern corner of the airfield, still pushing up their vehicle. But they are going to attempt to get some uh, recon data here. Plus, it is more than X-Ray. X-Ray is a four-man group. So let me see who the extra man is here. Uh, Koak. He's command two, I see. Gotcha. So that's kind of uh, interesting. That means uh, Blue 4 is really banking on this X-Ray position to get some preliminary recon data here. Uh, they're also, looks like they're going to scout out the Southern military base over here. 
maybe they're planning on cutting through the airfield at a later date on this operation. Potentially, that's that might be the wide right flank because they don't want to push through these open areas. So maybe they're going to use that as staging. Uh, but it could also just be they're clearing this area out to make sure that while they're pulling the vehicle through here, as well as the infantry, they're not going to get hit in the rear. Meanwhile, Charlie 2 has started collapsing over to the east. They, yeah, if you scroll down, you do, uh, you do hear the trucks faintly, very, very faintly, but they hit me just before the rain did. Mm -hmm. Especially now they're getting closer and closer to that team. With yep, Charlie 2 coming over with a hum, uh, arm, oh, that's both armed Humvees. Why would they put Charlie 2? They, I'm all, Charlie 2's the AT team, why are they in Humvees? I don't know, but they're about to roll up on these green Oh guys. my god. They just drop, and this is the perfect kind of concealment for them. This tall Yep, RPG. He's getting he's getting the RPG out. He's he's standing wait. The they Gunner absolutely saw that. He's tracking their position. Yep. That was they, they do not have pro I, that was um yeah, that was a glitch on the uh, legs. But they should I'm really surprised they're not trying to engage right now. Like this is exactly what the Charlie team needs to be countering right now. Yeah, and now they're pushing in. They're but they, they saw G legs. Yep. And Ma Mountain pushed into the into the trees over here, and he's crashed. RPG by. coming out. Mountain might go for the crowd to. Oh, they just crashed, and they missed the rocket because the Humvee crashed. Gunner just got shot out though. Yep. I'm not gonna lie, that RPG made my hand jump. I, I am so bad at jump scaring. <laughs> All right, so Austin powers it. They have Austin powers the Humvee, and yeah, well, now they're trying to hit the gunner here. Uh, excuse me, the driver here, but he might be able to get out. Uh, the other one other right Vic is coming out for though. That's a you saw. Oh that. dear, yeah, saw that. yeah. I that's not technically legal. I I mean to be fair, he was hiding in that grass, but so there is a rule in FNF. So other gunner went down, but there is a, there's a rule where you're not allowed to run people over. Uh, yeah, no, no. Because it's really overpowered. Stuff. Yeah, um, that is going to be reviewed. That's going to be reviewed. It's going to be reviewed. So it, it, it happened. The guy's dead. His RPG is on the ground, and they need to realize that and pick it back up. Um, but, yeah, they have taken out both gunners, and they're falling back. The Delta Two team now might be drawn to the sound of those. That, yeah, they're looking at, yeah. They're looking in that direction. So they, they might go in and clear that out. So we have Pepin and, and one. Pursue, and that's not the right move because of that entire squad that's now coming in. Beautiful wedge formation, I'll be honest. Coming in towards uh, the sound of that gunfire. So and thank you for the other. For the uh, Green 4 Matt team. Along with Alpha 1. Yeah, this is, this is they're going to be getting circled and overwhelmed really quickly here. Oh, yeah, there and there goes the leadership yes. right there. Ouch. Wow. He took down one of the gunners. Based on that volume of fire, I would turn tail and flee right now. If I were green four. Yeah. A little bit of a missed opportunity to take those Vicks out, but then again, there was a, technically a rule break right there, so you can't really blame them. It was a very stressful situation because those are both 50 cals and uh, just one bullet would absolutely cripple uh, whoever it hit. So yeah. they kind of they, they try to play it safe, but the mountain kind of also kind of jumped the gun in a way. I don't know. It's a very hectic situation. Well, so the yeah. whole reason that situation got triggered in the first place was the RPG gunner had his RPG out, but it did the Ooh, sorry, glitch. Quick, tossing yep. grenades over the wall. Hits two of them directly at their feet. They're tossing grenades back as their buddy breaches around the corner. Gets headshotted though. This is Rolo, by the way, the last Greenport guy. And he goes down. Yeah, he got overwhelmed. By the run of suppression, but mm -hmm. there's some more fire put in, and I think he hit his own buddy there, but Probably. still alive. Yeah, one to one trade, the best you can do as a defender, but. Ooh, oh, oh, oh! Ooh, friendly fire. Tech it uh, takes out. Uh, Kuba's here immediately starts medicking, but yeah, just because they didn't realize. I believe there's a medic on scene, though. Yep, uh, Candy to come up. There's also Blade. I have eyes on this. Uh, grass is kind of in the way, along with the trees, but interesting. You might be able to sight out a shot or two, but 
Mm -hmm. You gotta remember, uh, Blue 4 has a numbers advantage here. I didn't catch which one it was. I think it was only 15%. Meanwhile, Platoon 2 HQ has driven up to this terminal site and is looking around, trying to make sure there's no explosive traps in play, which I don't believe there are. Uh, and they're just making sure it's clear. Yep. But I can't see entirely what he sees, because he's got his crosshair, or his irons right over the uh, marker. Yeah, no, he sees them. He sees them. Yep. Yeah, he absolutely sees them. Oh, tries to go for a qu uh, quick shot, but misses. And now that they, they are... He didn't miss. He got him. There's some blood on the ground, but... You are very right. You are absolutely correct. He's hearing some other gunshots, too. I think that might have been his battle buddy engaging. He is trying to line something up here. Not going to lie, the marksman here, because uh, X-Ray did, did originally come up to this position, I think uh, would have been a really good call here. He's actually a little further back up here, uh, and he is trying to line up a shot. He does have a decent angle now. He's adjusted position. He does have a decent angle on that terminal, but now he's mm -hmm. turning around and falling back, probably because the, the cover got blown. But still, unfortunate for Green Force's defense uh, strategy here. So, like you said, this was meant to be just an Overwatch. They weren't entirely going for uh, a static, you know, we stop them here kind of. Well, I mean, they, they, uh, so Dingo does have good eyes on where you have to be to initiate the terminal. I'm really surprised that the Marksman isn't right there, though, because he would be the best scoped player to take out anyone that goes on uh, that terminal position right there. But I understand they want to be a bit more defensive with them. But at the same time, if you want to, like, lock it down that would be the best way to do it. But I think they were just anticipating Blue Four to send a lot more guys up here to cover this position. So Terminal 1 hack just started. More shots going in the, the field right here. Actually, that's the Marksman firing yeah, that is the from marksman. range. I think you try to get a better position and just reposition, but... Yeah. But and that is some accurate counterfire. I don't know if they spotted it or they're just lucky with their shots, but... So the tracers on the Marksman is what's giving his position away. Oh, are there tracers? They, yeah, they're full tracers. I think that's done on purpose just so they can get an idea of where the marksman himself is. Dingo, meanwhile, trying to fire onto uh, some of Foxtrot here. He did hit Galil. Foxtrot, by the way, is a um, machine gun squad of uh, Foxtrot 1 and Foxtrot 2 are machine gun. Uh, each have a machine gunner. So it's uh, for the U.S. a 240 Bravo, which is 762. And for uh, usual op for its PKPs, which, you know, like the regular auto rifle in the squad 762, but uh, you can put scopes on them and shit. Yes. So Delgo is still over here, still um, evading and escaping, but he has open fire, trying to pull his last stand against a whopping seven blue. Yeah, blue four normally gets their butts kicked. <laughs> he's actually at two kills for him now. So he's, he's doing some jungle fighting here. Who is this, Dingo? Dental Doe. Uh, the guy, yeah, no, you're right. I think he got one of the gunners and he might've gotten a shot early here. He is engaging more dudes though. Oh, very close on the headshots. Get some good shots in the leg, but isn't able to secure the kill on that guy. Yep, tagged Candy pretty well. So I would assume his uh, second kill is the guy that's dead right here. And his first kill was probably one of the gunners of the 50 cal. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. But either way, he does have three now, so he's putting in some work, making up for the rest of that Matt team being wiped out early on. Terminal one just exploded. And you're seeing some... Now coming onto this team. Yep. And one of the Pursuit 2 HQ guys is dead now. Uh, whoever was, was, was with Dusty... Don't see who Marksman was. just got picked off. Ooh, yep, he's down. Could wake back up, but... Great shots, great returning fire. Dingo has uh, swung around, by the way. No, that wasn't. He wasn't on that fire. Someone knocked out one of the gunners for the 240 Bravo, and I think Dingo's trying to mag dump this truck. This is a misplay from Green Four. Terminal Two. They uh, Foxtrot team for Green Four have pushed out to the north. It looks like they were going to try and assist X-Ray, but yeah, I that, told you they were going to push out too far, and there's not really any defenders here. And X-Ray, meanwhile, doing a wide. Hold up, X-Ray for Blue 4 is going to run into Bravo 2. Ooh. Yeah, they're playing the edges of the map with that 240 Humvee. But this way? No, Green that's... 4 hasn't noticed yet, though. No one looks uh, alert about it. Swola is looking in that direction, but he doesn't look alert about it. No, he, he, he didn't see it. Yeah, he's just staring off. 
passing so, the time, so they should have a very easy kill on this NPC level awareness. So Foxtrot's folding back. You still have Dental Doe harassing Blue for Delta 2 and keeping them in play here. I do see, uh, I think, the third kill that Dental got uh, by the fence line here. I'm going to quickly check if he's still on three kills. Yep. Stanners is a marksman for Blue 4. He does have eyes on this hilltop little uh, outpost. Has eyes on, um, let me see who was this again. Uh, Swola, who is the engineer. Again, just kind of vaguely scanning. Shots go out. Those are way too low, Stanners. Swola re uh, reacts. He's gone down. Or he, he gets down, rather. Mm-hmm. And he will be calling that in as he gets into cover. All right, so we have a lot of position of contact right here. Uh, mm -hmm. Blue 4 Marksman engaging uh, Bravo 2, as you said. Uh, Blue 4 is trying to have a massive pincer maneuver attack from the northwest and the direct north on Terminal 2. Uh, Platoon 2 HQ has successfully pulled out of Terminal 1 site. Uh, I do see a dead Blue 4 guy here, though, so uh, definitely they did get a few licks in. And then we have a Humvee going up to Blue Ford Delta 2 and potentially a truck to uh, come up and pick people up so they get away from Dental Doe here. Uh, Delta 2 is pulling away in command, might have gone up there to uh, force them, uh, give them some new orders or pick up a few people. So they're going to try to leave that engagement and focus on the objective here because you don't want to have a good chunk of your guys uh, stuck in a random guerrilla fight with one or two dudes. What I'm also concerned about is Alpha Squad here for Green 4 is going to potentially try to get behind Blue Four's northwestern attack wave here. Uh, it looks like this is turning into a three pincer attack, actually, uh, because Bravo is now fanning out to come from the southwestern side. They're gonna run into Echo One here, and we're seeing Alpha for Blue Four starting to engage Delta of Green Four here as this attack starts. So I'll be curious to see how much damage Alpha does on the rear of this attack wave. Yeah, um... They, Blue 4 definitely has the numbers for this. Also, uh, X-Ray has relocated a little bit just to the junction to their north, a couple hundred meters, and because everyone at that hilltop outpost had their heads down because of the incoming uh, sniper fire, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they entirely saw that they moved, although it's not too far away, so they could very easily spot them out still. So we got a lot now. Yep. Uh, for Green Four, uh, attacking Echo Two in the forest on, off the uh, eastern side of the compound. X-Ray, they've pushed into the Terminal One area, trying to clear it out apparently, but there's no one here, and they need to fall back and support this Terminal Two area. Yeah, they thought there were more guys down there. Ooh, uh, something just blew up, and down goes the crane. Oh shit! That was uh, appears to have been a transport truck. Within the AO here, it, uh, I don't know what got it. I don't know. We had sideways go down. He's what back up though. Yeah. And that gloriously stretched cursed crane, uh. It's <laughs> the Arma 2 ported crane. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awful and it's great. So we just had, uh, Daniel on Blue 4 and Flux on Green 4 do a trade. We got another Green 4 guy over here with a Blue 4 guy really close there. Uh, within two trees, but Green 4 does not have the numbers here to hold this. Not even close. Yeah, the pop and smoke now. This Alpha is good. Bringing the pressure across the field, trying to get to the wall here. Finn is in this uh, two Ooh. bunker with an AK. That Green 4 Alpha group really needs to close the gap here. You can hear those trucks starting to pull in. Finn, he's the kind of person to put down some charges. One of them goes off in the forest, looks Explosive like. Explosive trap went off, but it is too far for it to be effective. Uh, hold up, there's a blown up UAZ next to it. Okay. Yeah, I that think- To add for the explosion. Yeah, I think that was coincidental, because it wasn't right on top of it, but that's- Yeah, so I, I think the charge was actually on that UAZ to just give it an extra level of explosion, because some of the vehicles, when you death them, Ooh, are really effective. It, nice it explosive it. there. I took out McGowan, and I think someone else. He doesn't have any kills credited, it, but I want to say... Yeah, it wasn't his explosive trap, though, but I do I believe know. it did a good bit of damage here. I agree. I'm going to check the map here. Finn is the explosive guy, though, so mm -hmm. I think it actually was his because he's the only one in this AO. Yeah, he's the closest to it by just a couple meters. Ooh, Stark! And he gets shot in the back of the head. Cheeky angle, yeah. Stark with that cheeky angle on Finn. Takes him down. 
Couldn't wake back up. There's one. Now that took down a couple of people. That took down Foika, and I really want to say someone else. Yeah, Foika's down. Only Foika. No, Did one person get killed? No. no. Uh, Finn does have a kill. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, so someone did. No, it's a friendly dead body. There's the enemy dead body. Uh, the roster real quick. No, no, Finn. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, there. Uh, Finn wakes back up. Uh, there is a, a blue four guy. Eason got killed by it. Yeah. I always love seeing good explosive traps, and Finn again is keeping my dream alive. Well, yeah, he actually crawls. He gets out of the tower and crawls into the trees outside the compound. Here we go. Uh, lending to his Finnish nationality. Finish tree defense. He's going to be able to pick off a few people before he goes down. He's got one guy crawling close. There's a bush in the way, though. All he needs to do right now is listen for blue four and then adjust and take him out. But this one blue four guy is going to crawl right next to this tree. The rain is going to really suppress his footsteps, though. What? You, you like seeing traps. Explosive traps, you pervert. Anyway. Blue four getting all around this tree. We have one blue four guy right up on the tree. And no, no, he killed Finn. Uh, he went prone and saw his feet and took him out. Oh, who's the machine gunner there? Stealth silent. That's his second kill with that 249. Hot damn. Must have had some good feet if you wanted to take him out for him. Funny. That was an interesting play right there. Really smart. I wonder what he heard, though. And a grenade goes off and knocks McGowan out as they're now throwing more grenades into this compound. Ooh, grab might go down to this one. Wow, that was on top of grab there, but he appears to be A-OK. -okay. A little bit of blood, though, but no significant damage because none of his limbs change texture. Mm -hmm. And you've got a Foxtrot truck drive driving right into... One of the 50 cal cars, oh. and uh, yeah, that's that's dead. That's Driver just got shot. Yeah, Ouch. Jupiter. Rip. Was that just Jupiter in there? Yeah, it was just Jupiter. There's no one else. He was trying to flee. No. Blue no, Four exactly. might actually, though, get the win here. We got a few guys on X-Ray trying to encompass Platoon 2 HQ and Delta 2. Daniel Doe still... Uh, no, he's moved a little bit, but he's... I think he's going to be a bit too slow to come in unless Alpha Group can come around. Looks like there was another explosive play or something here. Maybe a machine gun because we got multiple men down now. Uh, maybe Alpha puts machine gun fire in that direction. We got a second guy down over here as well and another dead blue four guy. I I missed it. I don't know what happened here. Mm, same here. Command is yeah, bringing circle by X-ray and these all, all three armed Humvees. Oh lord. That's, that is not a good call there. X-Ray is actually dismounting. They're going to wipe them out on foot. Speaking of X-Ray, Green 4 X-Ray just lost two of its dudes at Delta 2. Mm -hmm. It's There's some aspects where Green 4 is doing really well, but at the same time, Blue 4, with that numbers advantage, is just fully empowering this AO. Uh, Let's see how well. The compound. He's yep. Being blocked by the crane itself. For his he gets spotted though. He's dead. Moment. Yep. And he gets taken out by Collins, who is on two kills. Very nice to done. And that's gonna be the last of the green four resistance. Azariah was over here. Yep. Buckets and popped him. Down. Alpha for green four is trying to come on this north side, but they're not gonna. Be able they're to do they're too doing too wide of a flank. They missed their opportunity to push in on the rear of Blue Four's attack, and now I think Blue Four is just gonna outmaneuver him. They could still come in on this north side. Uh, they, they're focused on medical and not really doing much security. So they could, if they were able to... See, if, if he was looking right, though, he'd see these blue four guys out of position, though. But they're not focusing on that. Instead, they're focused on remaneuvering. Yeah. Hold up. Now they're starting to spot. Oh, Alpha 1 for blue four just got just spotted the Alpha squad. Yeah. Back in a straight line and falls to the ground. It's a face full of mud. Might see Platoon 1 HQ come in the rear here and do it. Did it just say Terminal 2 was stopped? No, it had started. started. Okay, I, I thought I read something different there. I was about to question everything. <laughs> Second Alpha guy for Green 4 goes down. And Azariah getting double tapped. Oh, yeah. Green 4 Command got taken out. 
X-Ray and those, these two Humvees are still working this uh, strip of foliage uh, to the northwest of Terminal 3. Bravo and Foxtrot leads are in here now, and they, at, at this rate, they're all going to get just overwhelmed and uh, taken down. Oh, death. wow. Yep. There goes Bravo squad lead. He's yep, just now. dropped by Husky. Uh, he accidentally hit the V button to do a vault animation, and that got him stuck yeah. in place for Husky to basically get yeah. the headshot there. You really can't do that. Yeah. yeah, there's not there's not gonna be any rescue on Terminal Two. Looks like Alpha no. for Green Four might try something, but it's too late at this point. Thirty seconds to go, not enough time. Alpha's too busy working on their mass cats here. I'm wondering if Delta is gonna come up. Uh, Delta Two specifically for Blue Four is gonna come up to assist. But we also have Command driving up with a Humvee here. There is a Green Four guy right in play who just went prone. He did spot. He's lined up a PKM. Will he take the shot? Mm-hmm. Last passions of defense for Green Form. Kind of yeah, there's the, there's a prone guy with AT right there. The <laughs> squad leader just knocked himself out with his own GP25. And the Man. RPG guy just... Ba it, 10 meters. That was a big would... miss. There goes Terminal 2. Top of the trench. Mackie and Wardust. Blue Force just... Is he unconscious, or is he, like... Ooh, oh, he nope, he's dead. All right. But Platoon 1 HQ now closing the gap. They're going to walk right on top of this Green 4 guy. Green 4, he's not reacting to those shots. He might be injured? I think he's just trying to hide. It's short, boy. There we go. As he's laying down, crawling through the trees. And he just completely missed the blue four dudes. <laughs> he's going to hear that blue four medical, though, over the rain. It's really loud when you're this close. The other blue four guy just got tapped. Yeah, Jonathan. Oh, short boy. Else, but, but he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Three shot, headshot, a little bit of a desync right there, but it was a good call. And now you got a blue four guy running up and uh, tapping Jonathan. Dryden coming in and taking that down. So now it's down to a 1v1 up here. Well, but no, short boy is uh, he's heading north away from all this. Alpha, though, getting a lot of those four guys that uh, were down are actually back up. Only one is still down here. So really great medic work by Alpha. That is the type of medical that does change the entirety of the game. If you remember that round two in EU, I believe, two sessions ago, uh, the winter one on Trenaris, where Blue 4 was getting hampered as the attacking faction, but was able to bounce it back because of the sheer amount of medical, especially that Scandi Recon did, uh, literally bringing a third of their force back from the dead. It's a little bit of a hyperbole, but it was a significant number. Daniel Doe coming up. He might be able to join the Remnant of Alpha here. Yep. Damn. He's been walking this entire time. Wasn't able to recover that RPG-32. Is it still over there? I want to see if I can remember where they died. Uh, Short boy being caught out of the position and shot by Stark here. But a lot of blue four that field, unfortunate. is crossing up in this forested area. And they're going to have not a lot of resistance to fight against. I mean, looking at the roster here, green four has at least 50% of their force dead. I gotta interrupt you because the Dishkins are opening up on the Humvees now. They've put them all up here, it looks like. Oh, I see one. I'm trying to find the other one. Yeah, the other one's over by the barn to the south. Oh, so that's, oh, oh. that's both of the ones that they had at their disposal in the, for the defense of Terminal 3. So Slow just walked up and mag dumped Hudson. Uh, so Slow getting a second kill, now doing a reload using the tree as cover. Gets the reload and is now pursuing this other guy as he's trying to run off. It's Collins. Oh, and he but he gets tapped. Yep, gets down. Not to wake back up. RPG going on the X-Ray Humvee and taking it out. Uh, Johansson goes down. Good 26 shot. Yeah, very good 26 shot, especially from that kind of range. So that's just the gunner. He was the only one in there. But that Humvee looks oh. like it's out of commission. That is the armored one, so that's a big asset. Probably, I mean, the single biggest asset for Blue 4 out of commission, at least uh, unable to move. I don't know, just seeing the sheer amount of Blue 4 left, and there is a little bit of uh, 
what would be the right word? Uh, consistency here. They're all still together. They can all still do really well. Green 4 has a nice defensive advantage here to try to catch them out of the open. There's still two Green 4 guys crawling up to try to get some licks on Blue 4 here, but it's tough. One of these uh, Green 4 guys is a machine gunner, though. It's Anders Main. And he's with 2,600. Two pretty decent players in FNF. Yes. 2600k on Prius man, hiding down low, hopefully they can do something, getting some overwatch uh, support from Lucius over by these trenches near the barns, but I wonder if that might give away their position, they've crawled into the forest now, and they're- Guy in the tree, Bravo 1 heard them moving, Yeah, maybe they're I hope he's still doing medical. Oh, this is close quarters, this is the closest quarters I've ever seen. Oh man, he's literally right. He was literally right on top of him. Yeah, they these trees, man. Oh, there goes the machine gunner. Great mag dump from Collins. He's on three. Wow. Now. And he immediately pulls away just as the other guy crawls up. Mm hmm. He literally, 2600 literally missed him as he came back. That's yeah. crazy. More green four guys coming up here. Almost a friendly fire shot there. But Green 4 sending more many here. They're they're losing a lot of guys on this left flank. They got to be careful. Sometimes being offensive isn't the best idea. RPG going out, it is a miss. Collins heard it. He's got to be careful, though. Uh, he He's in a tree. He doesn't realize there's so many guys around. It. Hold up. Green 4 just spotted him and is trying to follow him. Oh, no. He lost sight of him. Come on, 26. Oh, he gets one more. Wow. Yeah. Collins on his fourth kill before he's eventually surrounded. But those are the types of plays Blue 4 wants to make to ensure they keep that numbers advantage. Messy. So Green 4 doing their best here. They're peppering some of the forested area here. Got, uh, looks like, uh, no, that's a spare. Like, yeah. Like I, they, they've put up. Green put up a great fight, but Blue Four just has the raw numbers because of how well they've maneuvered and separated um, these Green Four forces. Daniel Dell up there in the north by the airfield, he's been taken out. So as soon as these guys get mobile, um, actually I want to check. So I've got Yanni in my chat here, and remember when we brought up the fact that uh, Green Four doesn't have any body armor compared to Blue Four has their U.S. chest rigs. Mm -hmm. Yanni's telling me the main issue that Green 4 is suffering from right now is they cannot pen the body armor with the AKs because the body armor is designed to stop AK rounds. So yeah. that's how body armor works. Just I I know, but normally there's a mod there that the Friday night fight mod that we have that we all run is supposed to change the of armor values so that it's supposed to not be able to tank as much. So honestly, if that's the case and it's still tanking a lot of fire, what should have been the difference was, I don't think Blue Four should have gotten any body armor at all at that point. They can get helmets, sure, but when the mod kind of rescripts how the damage values of a lot of guns, uh, because it basically it uh, makes 7.62 a little less deadly than what it actually is, uh, yeah, that body armor is going to be a lot more effective. Uh, same with the helmets, too. So, Bring it up to, I guess, whoever vetted it. It's not it. scripted super uh, armor. It's just there's less damage. But, yeah, no, that, that will probably be brought up in feedback. But understanding that, it's kind of, after that point, you can kind of see why Blue 4 has such a high number advantage still. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still been a few guys that have been getting some really good multi-kills here. But it's it's just been luck of the draw in some of these situations. Because let's be honest, we're never going to see another Audrey Hotto level incident again, but we can always dream. I still like regret that I wasn't there for that. So Blue 4 is now trying to suppress out of the tree line here. They're firing from a pretty big range. I don't think they're going to get anything, but Green 4 is only down to less than a dozen guys. They're not trying to suppress out of the trees so much as they're trying to kill the guys that are in the trees. Rory had someone else with him, but now he's the last Green 4 guy in yep. the forest. And he is great on top of him right now. Ooh, pushes up, gets a lucky headshot on the X-Ray guy. And is blindly spraying right now. Oh, yeah, he should he take a moment to reload his box. I, this is going to be a tough push. I'd hate to see him run out of ammo. 
Yep. But if I was him, I would probably loot a 249 that he passed. But the, the heavier 762 by 54, I would prefer that. Just That's to, fair. Have had the, the but I, I'd prefer the 249 to get behind their lines and, uh, you know, just confuse them with uh, gun audio. Potentially, but here we go, two on one. Pushing right up. We just saw him mag dump. Oh, man. Gets his handgun out, gets a few double taps. Oh, and he gets tapped. Went down in only three shots there, but yeah, that's the power of having no body ammo. Body ammo, uh, body armor. But yeah, he should have reloaded that PKM box. He would have been able to get a few more, but that was a great streak. Who was that again? Uh, that, fuck, who was that? <laughs> oh my God. I want to see what his final kill count was. Uh, no, it wasn't Lucius. It was Rory. It was Rory. It's Rory. He had, he had three kills, but um, Aaron, who he downed, wakes back up. Um, so yeah, that, he yeah. woke. He woke up crouched because he had his law out for some reason. So the animation forced him up. Don Cheese, thank you so much for the five gift subs. If you got a sub from him, make sure you thank him. Otherwise, I hope you all keep enjoying the operations, and I hope you get a kick out of this. All right, so there is still a little bit of hope. We got uh, Luso back here with a GL. Real quick, West Side Humvees are they're doing a bit of a Mad Max style, making a run on this outpost. There's no one here anymore. Wow. Spraying this whole place down and almost crashed the Humvee in the process. Max Wima getting the kill there. So Luso goes down. He had the drop. He had the first shot, but again, the body armor is just a very nasty variable in this first mission. Uh, we're actually having a bit of a confusion and friendly fire incident, I think, with Blue 4 guys. Uh, for Echo Carboner. One? Yeah, Carboner. No, uh, they're, they're, they they don't know they killed Luso, so they're still firing up there because he uh, died behind a, a bush. So they think he's still up there, so they're just trying to suppress. Green Force down to six people, and well, seven if you count uh, Eriku, Erikiru. Yeah, Blue Force still has like three-fourths of a platoon. Yeah, this is looking more and more despotic for Green Force. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's safe enough to call it. But we do only have 10 minutes or so remaining, so if they're able to hold out... Eh, it's possible. It's possible. There's, there's, there's a shred of possibility. Unlikely. But then again, Audrey Hado was unlikely, and that, so that was amazing. There is a chance, and we have seen memes be dreams in uh, this, uh, this glorious event that is known as FNF. Also, I will say, uh, between rounds one and two, I do have a commercial to play. And I will say, I've been uh, tapping my shoulder and had some information that round three of EU is going to be very interesting according to the person. Yes. So be sure to stick around for round oh, three God. in a couple hours. That's the one I'm playing. Well, I'm glad I didn't say anything, any specifics then. So uh, AT just came out and actually crippled. Who is this in here? Uh, Lucius uh, here. Yeah. yeah he's, he's, he's got cripple fun. walk, so he's going to start uh, bandaging there. That was a great AT cripple. shot. Oh my god. He's doing a nice little crip walk, little, little dance back into cover. Bandage himself up. So I'm wondering if they're going to let the uh, Delta 2, Foxtrot 1, and Charlie 2 teams kind of sweep this town. And then from there come in as the rest of the force kind of overwatches. Because it's a pretty nasty amount of open distance here. But I think they could still, you know, just get up there and overwatch. Because Green Force simply doesn't have the manpower to cover this there is seven guys left for green four actually yes there is one at the uh barn who has welcome back up yep um oh wait did he go down uh it was uh yeah, erikuru and uh scs and scs was a, I think the one gotcha one. gotcha maz round coming on the other side of the barn i think that went in and then went just to the back wall there no shrapnel uh this time for lucius but he is kind of stuck in a pen right here yeah. Oh, Lord. More AT going in there. That one hurt. More AT oh, going in there. Jesus. They, they want, want him dead. It's this building. Blue Ford wants to try to hit as many dudes as they can. So they are, you know, they. Doing some work in the sense of making his presence bigger than it actually is. So good for him on that. But damn. No. <laughs> now you got both of the uh, Charlie 2 Humvees. One crashes into uh, a sandbag that was hidden in a bush, and I I can't believe that actually worked, but there you go. Little hedgehogs there. Get out okay. They did some suppression on that barn. Foxtrot 1's going to walk up, uh, assisted by Delta 2. 
Oh That's yeah, they're doing a thunder run. Gun. Needs to pull that gun forward. Nope. Oh, okay. They're holding. And we have dismounts. And they bust down the wall. And he almost ran him over. And almost got shot in the back of the head. But that's one down, two one down on each side, so a good trade. And we have a 4v2 right now. The Pete pushing it on the right side. Do, doesn't know where one of them gets knocked. Yeah. Yep. Other one gets knocked. Yeah, but Pete's battle buddy gets taken. Good marksman work here by Fred, but grenades going off. Yeah, Fred's on three. He's just using the irons now. He must have picked that rifle up from the uh, actual marksman. Yeah, he's just using the, the pure irons. Having some green four guys from the uh, outer and eastern side trying to fold in here. But you have blue four right on top of this terminal, and there's the hack. Yep. Uh, guy in the shed gets down standards. Yeah, he started that hack. Fred is now the last one in this terminal trying to get some more kills. He gets another one. That was a Matt Gunner. So Fred's on four now. And but he gets pissed. He's getting shot from the smoke. Yep. And oh. he was spotted. And I I think that's going to be GG. I think so too. Because Eriku be has the amount of time to get up there, but he has to full on sprint at this point. And instead he's laying low. Uh, Luso, excuse me, Lucius, who was in here, he went down, managed to get one when he went down, which is significant considering they're fighting dudes with body armor here. Mm -hmm. Now he did great with that marksman rifle, close range. Yeah. Great job. Uh, great shots. Random explosive traps going off in the forest to the northeast, probably by. Uh, Eriku, his uh, buddy STS also went down. He got blindly suppressed, and now he, I think, is getting shot at by uh, Dryden here, who's coming down to try to hit him. Ooh, and and Dryden gets the kill. Four eliminated. That is GG for round one. Great job from Blue Four. Um, they they had great tactics, but I think yeah their equipment advantage. The the body armor was just yeah. way too big of an advantage in my opinion. It was an issue because like you said the config should have rewritten that if for some reason it wasn't. Well it, no I I saw it so when that um hold up when that PKM gunner came up where Echo is in that tree line I watched him literally mag them like six or seven shots going into people and then he just got like two tapped you know. So I, I can see where the frustration is there. That was my concern when I saw that they had Alice webbing. Like, there's a difference yeah. between, like, body armor being tweaked and not having any body armor at all. At all, exactly. Some webbing, but... We'll leave it to that to the mission makers and uh, mission vetters, that kind of thing. Yeah, we'll throw it. Well, there's no feedback channel anymore, but, you know, you can throw it to them directly. They, they still can, yeah. They can, yeah. All right, let's jump downstairs. Absolutely.